and welcome to part one of Speranza Guesses the External Exam, the series where I try to guess what's on the external exam so you don't waste your holidays and instead you do some studying. I've just come in from the pool so we can get rid of these and let's do some maths. We're looking at a tech free multiple choice question here. It's got something to do with logs. If you want, you should hit pause right now and try to solve this. Give yourself 90 seconds, that's how long these multiple choice questions should take you. Hit pause. Do it, hit pause. And I'm gonna start solving this in three, two, one, here we go. So somehow we've gotta move from this form here, which looks pretty exponential, to a form that looks more like this, which is logarithmic. So we need to know how to convert from one to the other. And this is the conversion here. A to the B equals X can be converted into logarithmic form, log base A X equals B. Now the question's a little bit wonky here because it's got this plus two on the end. So we need to move that plus two first to the other side. So that gives us y minus two equals a to the b minus four x. And so now, even though it looks really complicated, we're really in this form here, where y minus two is the x, and a is actually the a here, and b minus 4x is the b here, which means that we can write this now in logarithmic form by saying log base a y minus 2 equals b minus 4x. Now we must be getting closer here, but we want to get that x by itself now. So it's pretty basic algebra from here. We're going to uh, subtract the b here, so negative b plus log base a y minus 2, and that leaves us with negative 4x. And then we're going to say that x is equal to negative b plus log base a y minus 2 divided by negative 4. And we can see none of our answers really look quite like that, but instead of dividing by negative 4, we can multiply by negative 1 quarter. And that looks really close to, say, this one or this one, right? So we've got that y minus 2 here. So it looks really close to this one, except there's no negative out the front of the quarter here, but there's also no negative here and no positive there. So all the signs are swept around. And that's fine, because we can say one quarter, and instead of the negative being here, we've got a positive there, and instead of a negative being there, y minus 2. If you expand that, and get back to, like if you expand this and expand this, you're going to get the same answer. Alright, so there's our answer. The answer is A. Alrighty. So now that you've done that, if you did pause it and if you did try it, and if you got B, C or D, think about why you got B, C or D. Think about where your error was and then have a think about that. If you had trouble with it, if you had no idea how to get started, Go and look for some of these questions. We are moving on to question two. All right, this sort of question have, has never appeared on a Queensland paper, but it's appeared on lots and lots of Victorian papers, and I feel like it's just such a fun question. By the way, if you see some of these questions and you're wondering whether I wrote them or I grabbed them from somewhere else, the answer is sometimes one or the other. This one actually does get pulled directly from a Victorian paper. All right. Now this question stumps maths teachers as well because it feels like at first glance that there's just not enough here. You're told the integral of some unknown function is 5, some other integral of the same unknown function is negative 6, and some other integral of the same function is something, and you're supposed to know what that is. And so it feels just, just wild, it just feels like you can't figure this out at all. Let's draw a picture of what's going on. Actually, maybe you should pause it first, but given I've told you, hey, maybe you should draw a picture, draw a picture. Give yourself 90 seconds to figure this out, and then come back. Pause. Three, two, one, and let's draw this picture. All right, so this question really tricks people up, and the reason it tricks people up is because it feels like there's not enough here. We're told that the integral between 12 and 1 of some function is equal to 5, the integral between 5 and 12 of the same function is equal to negative 6, and then we're asked to find the integral between 5 and 1 of that function. But not knowing the function, how on earth do we do it? All right, let's draw the picture. We've got this thing here. Let's make our function look like just a squiggly thing here like that. And we're told between 1 and 12, or between 12 and 1, the area is 5. So here's 1, here's 12, and let's say the area from there to there, let's call it area like A, all right, area A, 
is equal to 5. All right, let's look at this bit here, because this is weird. Between 5 and 12, why is the smaller number on the top? Well, if you swap the terminals of your integral, you swap the sign on your integral. So I'm not comfortable with this 5, 12 thing, so let's rewrite it as 12, 5. And the integral between 12 and 5 of this function is positive 6. All right, let's put 5 in here somewhere. There's 5. And the integral from there to there, which we'll call like b, uh, is 6. All right, this is super odd, right? How can it be possible that the area of this bit is equal to 5 and the area of a smaller part of the function is equal to 6? The thing that we're being asked to find is this area right here, area c. We'll just put this in here, area c make a little question mark here. Okay, what we should be able to understand here, and the trick to this kind of question, is to say that the integral between 12 and 1 of a function will be equal to the integral between um, 1 and 5 of that function plus the integral between 5 and 12 of that function with respect to x, with respect to x, with respect to x. Okay, and what do we know? We know between 12 and 1 is equal to 5. We know that between 5 and 1, that's the thing we're trying to find, c. And we know that the integral between 12 and 5 is 6. So we should now be able to figure out that c is equal to 5 minus 6, which is equal, c is equal to negative 1. So algebraically, our answer is negative 1, which is b, but we really still want to figure out the mystery of this, right? How can this area be 5 and a smaller area be 6? It's because my initial drawing is just not right. What it should really look like is a little more like this. Okay, this makes much more sense now. This area here is equal to 6, this area here is equal to negative 1 because it's below the function, and 6 minus 1 is 5, which is where our answer is. Now, this is a staple of Victorian exams. Uh, we haven't seen it in Queensland yet, but I just think it's a very clever question that tests your understanding of this idea, this idea that you can add two integrals together to get a larger integral. So you might be thinking that I'm going to go to question three of the multiple choice, but I'm not. I'm going to skip over all the other multiple choice. I'm going to do those in other videos. Now I'm going to go to two short response questions from Tech Free. So still, we're not going to touch our calculator. We're going to do some Tech Free. So it feels almost certain at this point that question 11 of Tech Free is going to be finding some derivatives. Finding some derivatives of a sine of natural log of E, um, and product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule style questions. All right, so there's six marks here, so you would expect this to take you about three minutes, about three minutes here, and about three minutes here. So I would suggest pausing the video, putting nine minutes on the clock, and trying these three questions. I've given you a hint, chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, think about those things, and see how you go. And I'm going to get started on these questions in three, two, one, let's go. All right, so this first question here is definitely a product rule question. The examiners are a bit funny, so it is a good idea to just write product rule here. Um, depending on how you interpret their marking scheme, you might get a mark there just for saying product rule. All right, let's get started. We know that f dash of x is going to be equal to uv dash plus vu dash. You can use other forms of the product rule, but I'm going to use this one here. Let's write all of those out now u is equal to 3x squared, u dash is equal to 6x, v is equal to sine x, and v dash is equal to cos x. This stuff is on your formula sheet. There's no excuse for deriving sine x and getting the sine wrong. Okay, now that we've got all of this, u v dash, so it's 3x squared times cos x, and then uh, v u dash, so plus v u dash, we've got 6x 
sine x. Now it does say no simplification required and I expect that to happen in this year's as well. So we can stop there. One mark for telling me it's the product rule or writing some kind of formula that indicates that you've got the product rule. One mark for either of those things and a mark for getting that entirely correct. Okay, so this next one here, it's going to be an example of the chain rule because we know how to do e to the x, but this e to some function, that's in replacement of that x. So in order to do the chain rule, we let the function inside the function be u. So let u equal this thing here for ln 2x. Now, it's a good idea if you can see that it's a chain rule question, write chain rule because then the examiners can see that you're about to do the chain rule. It's also a good idea to write the formula for the chain rule. dy dx equals dy dx du du. Okay, and now we need to know what dy du is and we need to know what du dx is. All right, well, we know that we've let u equal this, which means that y is now equal to e to the u, which means that dy du is equal to the derivative of that, which is e to the u. So we want dy du, dy du, e to the u. And we're going to multiply that by du dx. Now we know that u is equal to 4 ln 2x, so the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be equal to 4 times the derivative of ln 2x. Now ln anything x is just 1 on x. So this is 4 times 1 on x, or just 4 on x. So we can put that here now, 4 on x. Our last step here is to replace the u with 4 ln 2x. So uh, let's write it the way that we probably should, 4 over x e to the 4 ln 2 x. Okay, we're done there. Tell them it's the chain rule, show them a formula for the chain rule, and then do the chain rule. And here we have a quotient rule. We have a function over another function. So we'll let that function be u, we'll let that function be v. It's a good idea to tell them that you're going to do the quotient rule. And then let's write out our formula g dash x is equal to v u dash minus u v dash over v squared. And now it's a good idea to write out all of those. So u is equal to 4 minus x, u dash is equal to negative 1, v is equal to 2x plus 1 squared, and v dash is equal to, bring the 2 out, um, bring the derivative of that, 2 times 2, 2x two plus 1. And that's 4 times 2x plus 1, which is, actually, let's leave it there because that might help us simplify a little bit later on. Um, okay, finally, what else do we need? We need v squared. And v squared is equal to that bracket to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So that bracket, 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. Okay, and now we're just simply putting all of those things in. So v u, v u dash, so that's negative 2x plus 1. That negative is out the front of the bracket, squared. Minus u v dash, u v dash, uh, so that's 4 minus x bracket, uh, 4 times 2x plus 1. A little bit weird here. Let's write the 2x plus 1 there, and let's write the 4 out the front. No problem doing that. And then all over the square here, 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. All right, there is simplifying that can be done here, but the question tells us not to bother, so we're not going to. I've just realized I've misspelled quotient, but what can I say? I'm a maths teacher. Um, fine, whatever. All right, I'm going to run through one more question in this video, then we're going to call it quits. It's another tech-free short response. So it's more logs here. I know this was back in unit three and you've forgotten all the log stuff. So 
pause the video, try this question out. Don't get too freaked out if it's something you haven't really seen before. Just read the question and, and try it out. Uh, it's probably worth six marks. Uh, this is one I've kind of invented on the fly here. Uh, so I would suggest it's going to take you about nine minutes to get through it. All right, pause it. All right, it's a bit of a tricky question here because we're told uh, that x equals ln2 and y equals ln7. Okay, and now we need to express ln14 in terms of x and y. All right, we know that ln14 can be written as ln2 times 7. And the trick is here with these sorts of questions to see that this is the information you're being given, then ask yourself, how can I make these things appear in this question? All right, ln2 times 7 can be written as ln2 plus ln7. And we now know that ln2 is x and ln7 is y. So ln14 expressed in terms of x and y is x plus y. All right, this second question, we sort of go a bit backwards of that, of that way of thinking because we need to express y minus 2x plus 1 in the form log a, b. Now, we know that y is not y, it's ln7. We know that x is not x, it's ln2. And we've got this little plus 1 on the end. Now, the problem here is that, fine, we've got an answer, but it's not in the form log a, b. You'll see this a lot. You're asked to put something into a certain form. Okay, what can we do here? Well, we've got this ln7 minus 2 ln2. This 2 out the front's a problem if I want to combine two logs. So I'll bring that up to there like that. So I get ln7 minus ln Two to the two, which is of course ln two to the power of two is four, and then I've got this plus one on the end. Okay, and then you're asking yourself, well, all right, I've got ln seven minus ln four. I know I can do something with that. A log minus a log is ln seven over four. Okay, and then plus one on the end. We're getting really close, but we've still got this horrible little plus one on the end. So what are we going to do with that plus one on the end? Well, you should remember your log laws that log base a, a equals one. And we're going to use that fact to write one, not as one, but instead as log base e, e, or just ln e. So we can say ln 7 on 4 plus, uh, oops, plus ln e, log base e, e. And now that we've done that, we can finish this off using one more of our log laws, ln 7 on 4 times e, which is just ln 7 e on 4. Now, because it says log base a, b, I guess I can write this as log base e, uh, 7 e over 4, where this was my a value, e, and 7 e on 4 is my b value. And finally, we come to e to the y minus x. So e to the y minus x can be written as e to the ln, now y was uh, ln7, ln7 minus ln2. All right, we're getting used to our log laws here. We can rewrite this as e to the ln7 over 2, like that. And you should know that e, log, e to the power of log base e7 over 2 is simply going to be 7 over 2. That really is the end of the question here, but if you're not convinced that e to the power of a natural log is equal to whatever the natural log is, I'll give you a quick look at that to make sure that you believe it's true. If x was equal to ln uh, 7 over 2, 
Okay, if that's x, this is our unknown, right? Um, if I take the natural log of both sides, ln x, ln e uh, to the ln 7 over 2, so it's a bit confusing here. If I do that, I can use my third log law to take this power out the front here. And so I get ln 7 over 2 ln uh, e is equal to ln x. But ln e, log base e, e, is equal to 1, which means that 1 times ln 7 over 2 is just ln 7 over 2. And if ln x is equal to ln 7 over 2, then that means that x is equal to 7 over 2. If x is equal to this thing that we started with, and it's also equal to 7 over 2, then that must be equal to 7 over 2. You shouldn't have to do all of this nonsense. All you should see is an e to the power of an ln and know that the answer is just whatever is in the ln, 7 over 2. All right, that is four questions. You can see we've done two tech-free multiple choices and we've done two tech-free short responses. Once we fill this box in, we're all done. All right, that's it for this one. Um, I guess like and subscribe because I'm going to do one tomorrow.